All right, so in the last video, we looked at how elongation in terms of polymerization of amino acids occurs in the ribosome. We talked about incoming amino acyl tRNAs. We talked about TUGTP, TS, the proteins, peptidyl transferase, and then we also looked at this molecular wedge, EFG. Now we're going to assume we have a tRNA in the P site with a huge peptide chain. Maybe that's all we want. That's all we want uh, the peptide to be. So now we need to stop terminate. We need to terminate the translation. Now you'll notice here we have a stop codon. There's a lot of stop codons. There's three of them in fact, and this one is one of them. It's UAG. Now it turns out that instead of having a tRNA come in here to the A site like we talked about in the previous video, if we have a stop codon, then we're going to have what's called a release factor. The release factor is going to come into the A site. What's initially going to happen is once this release factor gets in, it's going to bind strongly to the stop codon. Okay, now here's what's going to happen. Initially what's going to happen is EFG GTP is going to come in. You don't see it here, but there will be an EFG GTP, just like we saw over here in the last video, along with something called IF3. There's another protein called RRF that's going to come in and force the EFG GTP to hydrolyze the GTP, all right? And that's going to cause the EFG GDP to leave. You're also going to get that protein RRF to leave. Also, the tRNA is going to leave, and the release factor is going to relieve, okay? The whole point of all of that is when you get the release factor come in, it's going to catalyze a series of processes that ultimately cause the entirety of the ribosome to disassemble. Here's the small subunit with the IF3. That's the small subunit. Here's the large subunit, and now you have the mRNA there. Okay, The mRNA will be degraded most likely. Okay, It can be reused again if it still is alive through another ribosome cycle, but it will eventually be degraded. Okay, um, But that's the whole point of the release factor. It's shaped very similarly to a tRNA, so it can fit into the, the A site of the ribosome, but through a series of processes that it catalyzes, it ultimately results in the, the destruction of the ribosome. All the pieces come apart individually, and they can be reused for different things. The mRNA can be reused for more translation, and these subunits can actually be reassembled also to do more translation. Okay, And that's how termination works by the uh, ribosome in translation. And this is for prokaryotes. Again, in eukaryotes, it's going to be very similar. Okay, The other thing you should also know that the release factor does that I didn't mention is it also is an enzyme on the top. Its top part, when it comes in here, is an enzyme that acts as a hydrolase, and it causes the peptide chain to be hydrolyzed off. It uses water, and it breaks the peptide off of the uh, tRNA in the P site. And that's why you see this peptide floating away. That peptide will basically finish folding into a protein, and it'll have some function as we know. Okay, And that is protein synthesis. Okay. One other thing I just want to mention is that what's really interesting is that once we get uh, the DNA uh, that is uh, transcribed by RNA polymerase into mRNA, remember we have all those processes of post-transcriptional modification, such as putting, at least in eukaryotes, we have a 5 prime methyl guanosine cap. We have uh, splicing. We have the 3 prime polyadenylation. Whenever we get those things happening, the mRNA, even while it's still being transcribed, will actually snake out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. And once in the cytoplasm, even while it's still being transcribed, it, ribosomes will attach and start to translate it, which is really interesting. Okay? In fact, you can also have multiple ribosomes on one mRNA molecule all working at the same time. This is what's called co-transcriptional, co-translational protein folding. Okay? So, even while you're still doing transcription in the nucleus, you can actually, believe it or not, still you can have translation outside the nucleus on the same mRNA molecule. The whole goal is to get things done as quickly as possible and as much as possible because you have to have protein uh, synthesis to a level that supports life. All right. Now, in the next series of videos, we're going to go over a different topic, which is more or less protein metabolism. We're going to talk about targeting of proteins, um, and how you can modify proteins, which are called post-translational modifications. And then we'll also go into regulation of gene expression and so on and so forth. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe for future videos and notifications. Thank you.